before we start, do you have insurance? Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. You're gonna be leaving this video knowing exactly how to easily found four cities before turn 40 with Caesar, so you can absolutely crush your next domination game. My videos are timestamped so you can jump straight to where you want and don't have to listen to me ramble. All right, so first things first, city planning time. Things you want to look for are luxury resources to settle on, preferably ones with faith, so you can hopefully get the settler pantheon, high food yields for that faster population growth, or culture is always nice too, as it helps you get down the civic tree faster, but more importantly, helps your borders expand faster, which saves you money from having to buy as many tiles to chop your armies out a little bit later. Now again, these are just a few things to look out for, so if you need more help in this this area leave a comment on the video and ask any questions that might be troubling you and I can reply or if there's enough interest I'll just make a video remember that moving isn't a bad thing at all if your city is gonna be that much better I'm okay with a turn four or five settle in a standard speed game if my spawning location is that bad although obviously you want to avoid this if you can today I'm gonna take you through this thing step by step showing you a build order you can start with and then tweak it for yourself depending on your play style and the map spawn you get we're gonna cover the overall strategy and reason we're opening up like this talk about the perfect pantheon but then what the realistic best options are after the game crushes your soul and you inevitably miss out on your free settler not only is the strategy just that good it's also that consistent so if you're in it for the long haul and are willing to spend some extra time with me after we cover the things i just told you about i'll run this back three different times with a lot of editing involved so you can see for yourself again and again how easy this is is, but also how easy it is to handle yourself when you spawn with a neighbor sieve so close you can spit on them or what happens when you have a rough spawn and you don't get a city settled until turn three or later because you have to move buckle up and I'll show you step by step just how easy this is so you can try it out for yourself in your next game before we get started here you should take a quick second to like the video this way you train YouTube to let it know you like watching content about the games you play and you definitely want to get better better at them faster. Better yet, feel free to leave me a comment too while you're at it. That would definitely help a small channel like me grow. And clearly, if you know anything about me, I need all the help I can get. Once you have your capital founded, start up a scout immediately. You want to get out and explore as much territory as fast as you can because you're essentially in a mad dash to find barbarian camps. Having the extra movement from scouts, especially when they get a promotion or two, definitely comes in handy for body blocking warriors from city states or jumping in at the last minute to snipe the barb camp from them. That's not even mentioning that with Caesar's ability, Veni Vidi Vici, pretty sure that's how you say it anyway, you get plus five combat strength bonus when fighting barb. So it's like all of your units come with a free discipline policy card. Plus they always earn normal experience when fighting barbarians. So that's another fucking crazy sick bonus. But the real icing on the cake is you get plus 300 gold whenever you conquer a city for the first time or when you earn gold from a barbarian outpost. It just snowballs so hard, it's absolutely disgusting in the best possible way. Not to mention, while we're here covering his other abilities, you got all roads lead to Rome. Okay, you can fucking read. So pause it here if you want to go over the exact wording of this, but basically every single city that you create, if it's in, within range of your capital, you get a road to it and you have a trade route, which gives you extra gold when you send trade routes past it. We have the Legion, which is like a swordsman on crack that can fucking chop tiles in order to get you more of an army fast so you don't have to have as many builders as you go. Their unique district of Bath is also great for building bigger cities and you'll want to take advantage of that in the mid and late games. But anyways, we're getting way too far ahead of ourselves. So let's keep things simple and jump back to what we were talking about before I went off on this tangent about Caesar and his all powerful abilities. Tech wise, you should head straight for animal husbandry in most situations, unless your spawn has you in a location where you'd be better off going for mining first. Either way, you should either open animal husbandry into mining or vice versa. The reason I'd recommend taking animal husbandry first in most situations is that it reveals horses on the map, which are automatic nice tiles to work even if they aren't improved yet, which can boost your capital, but also makes finding an optimal second city location even easier. Not to mention, the added bonus of getting them up online fast lets you sell them to other sieves when you aren't using them, which helps you to buy tiles or whatever else you're trying to do 
that much faster. In a civic tree, you should go for foreign trade first. This is because one, it's the easier of the first two civics to get the inspiration for, as you literally just have to find another continent. And this whole build revolves around scouting that map early and fast to find barb camps. But two, in a worst case scenario, where you somehow don't manage to find enough camps to clear or raid, this also helps you get to early empire faster, which then gives you a 50% production boost to settlers so you can hopefully still salvage your game without too much trouble. After your first scout finishes, I like to immediately go for a second scout here. However, arguments could be made that going back to back slingers would be the better choice. The reason I personally lean towards the second scout, unless I have an enemy sieve right on my doorstep, is that I like to have two separate groups for hunting barb camps. My first scout teams with my warrior and I use a second scout with the slinger. This slinger scout combo is so effective because nine times out of 10, you don't even have to kill the barb in the camp in order to harvest it. You simply move your slinger within sight range and the barb gets a hard on and chases out after your slinger. And then you just have to take advantage of your scouts added movement and zip in quick. So you can then either clear the camp or raid it to get that gold even faster. As we discussed, you should pick mining or animal husbandry next, depending on your map. And then for civics, you should actually work on craftsmanship after you either get foreign trade or have it researched to the point where it just needs to be boosted. This is because we want to get to state workforce quickly to get started on our government plaza. But also having the Ilkham policy card for the plus 30% production boost to builders is nice to slot in after getting your Pantheon. Not to mention a Goge is great to have in a pinch if you get bum rushed by a neighboring sieve. By this point, you've most likely found your first barb camp and have been able to either clear it if you're playing the base game or raid it if you're playing with barbarian clan mode. Now, I personally love this clan mode and play it pretty much all the time, no matter what sieve I am, but that's clear Clearly my preference, so just know that if it isn't your particular bread and butter, that's fine. The strategy is basically just as effective without it, playing with the vanilla gathering storm. By scouting so much territory early and having your scouts promoted fast, you can rush through the terrain easier as soon as the new barb camp spawns, so you have a good chance to cash in on any that end up spawning around your starting area. On the subject of scouting, you're really hoping to find a religious city state to get a first meet bonus on them, so you can then start earning more faith and get Get your pantheon unlocked faster. First meet bonuses on other types of city states are also nice. However, if you earn a free envoy from a goodie hut, I'd hold it in reserve in case you find a religious city state, but don't get the first meet bonus with them. For your research path, after mining, you head straight for bronze working. Not only do we want to find iron on the map so that hopefully our third or fourth cities can settle near some if we don't already have access to it, we want our encampment started as soon as possible in the capital so that the timing works out and we get the inspiration inspiration for state workforce, which is to build any district. Having said that, you probably already figured out that after craftsmanship, we're heading straight for the state workforce fork in the civic tree. The exception to this rule would be if somehow you hadn't managed to clear or raid any barb camps yet, and you needed to prioritize unlocking the colonization policy card, which you get with early empire, but I honestly haven't run into that problem yet, so I'd have to cross that bridge if I eventually got to it. So as soon as you have your first barb camp either cleared or raided, you instantly buy by your first settler and immediately send it on its way towards a good spot for your second city. Things to look for when choosing this location is obviously fresh water, but also pasture locations and marshes are good things to have in mind. Because after your soul's crushed and you find out that the free settler pantheon has already been taken, 9 out of 10 times, Lady of the Reeds and Marshes and God of the Open Sky are still sitting there waiting for you to choose and are definitely powerhouse choices for this strategy. That's as much detail as I'm going to get into about settling strategies. But again, if that's something that you're struggling with and you want more help, just ask questions down below and I'm happy to answer there or make a video if there's enough interest. When you found your second city, you want to start working on a monument there right away. This is because the plus two culture you'll get from it is crazy powerful in the early game when it's such a big increase compared to your overall culture output at this point. Plus, think of the bigger picture in domination games. You want to get the state workforce to unlock your government plaza. The reason for this being it's going to give you your third governor title, which allows you to get the black marketeer promotion for Magnus that essentially lets you chop out units for basically no strategic resource. You want to get to military tradition to get your flanking bonuses, plus the maneuver policy card, 
as well as Stratego's for the plus two great general points. By getting military tradition first, you can slot it in as soon as you get to political philosophy. By getting military tradition first, you get to your flanking and combat support bonuses faster, plus you have the maneuver policy card available if you want it earlier, considering there's a little bit of a gap before you get to political philosophy since it has such a high culture requirement since it's a classical era option. So after you've unlocked political philosophy, you're going to want to head towards military training next. This is important because you're going to unlock your raid policy card. This is unbelievably powerful. And then after that, you literally just click on mercenaries and that's all there is to it. You want to get here as soon as humanly possible because getting the professional army policy card for that 50% gold discount on all your unit upgrades is absolutely crazy. And to take it a step further, if you want to go later into the game after mercenaries is under your belt, then you're going to want to head towards things that allow you to get cores and armies. So you want to head down towards nationalism to get those unlocked as quickly as you can. Now that you have your double scout and slinger finished or single scout double slinger if that's the path you chose you want to start working on a settler in the capital right away while this is going on you'll usually be able to raid or clear at least one more barb camp and considering you haven't bought any tiles yet you can actually afford the 440 bucks needed to purchase a second settler for yourself this is essentially where you have to make the decision though if you're on a lower difficulty level and not on deity i would suggest saving the money until you unlock your pan Pantheon and see if religious settlements is there for the free settler. That way, if it is, there's settler number three and your capital will finish building the settler you've been working on for your fourth city and you're set, which then leaves you a boatload of gold to buy slingers or builders if you feel like it, spend some on better tiles, save it for upgrading warriors into legions or some combination of all of these. Hell, you could even decide to open five cities if you really had the terrain to warrant it and buy yourself another settler. However, on deity, I'd suggest you just take the plunge and buy the settler right away so you have it that much quicker. Chances are you won't be getting religious settlements for the free settler so you should plan not to and be pleasantly surprised if you do. Even if you do get it, an argument could be made that it would be better to actually just buy the settler and choose one of the pantheons we mentioned if your map justifies the decision. So whether you get it from the pantheon or buy it with gold, that's settler number three and when your capital finishes the settler there, it'll be used for your fourth city. When you're finished with the settler in the capital, start working on a monument there next for the boost to culture, which is important for the reasons we already covered, and your capital will be able to build it reasonably fast. Plus, timing-wise, chances are you're still a few more turns away before finishing bronze working and getting to start work on your encampment. When founding your third and fourth cities, I would start working on a builder right away in most cases. The reason for this being that you want to start chopping out your army as quickly as possible as soon as you get Magnus established in the capital and have the black marketeer promotion which you'll be getting as soon as you finish constructing the government plaza and have got an early empire in the civics tree to accomplish this most effectively and get your troops out as quickly as you can you want to basically swarm whatever city magnus happens to be in at the time with builders so you can make all your chops and then rotate them to the next city before rinsing and repeating this again and again however an argument can be made that taking the time to also build a monument before starting builder production in your third and fourth cities could also be worth the investment of time. In fact, I'd actually definitely choose to do this if I have an enemy civilization that is very close to me so that my first army doesn't have to travel as far before starting the war. But if I have a long way to go before attacking my first victim, I would opt for the builders instead just to have my timing attack hit that much quicker and that much harder. I guess now would be a good time to talk about how to pick your first victim. You know, assuming the choice wasn't made for you by a neighboring civ declaring war on you first. In that case, most times the closer the better as your legions are going to hit faster and could do more damage before you have to get a batting ram to support them to deal with walls. However, I'd also suggest you consider targeting a sieve that has a high science rate as long as it's not too far away. This is because they're going to out-tech you pretty quickly if left to their own devices, so it's good to hit them before they're overflowing with crossbows to rain on your parade and make life that much more difficult. This choice gives you an added bonus of being able to pillage their campuses as you go, which you 
help boost your own path down the tech tree so you can unlock your next unit upgrade faster, which would be getting to industrialization so you can upgrade your legions into man at arms. So that gives you some ideas for making the right choice as far as your early game victims and a little bit of a direction to head in tech wise since we already covered your early game civic path in detail earlier in the video. I hope you found this early game Caesar strategy to be helpful and I haven't wasted your time. Let me know in the comments down below one if you've tried this strategy before, how it went and on what difficulty you were playing at the time, two if you suggest doing anything differently than I talked about and three how fast you normally win your average domination game when playing with a standard size map and time settings plus no crazy game modes that change everything like the heroes or monopoly ones. The reason I'm especially curious about this last part is that I learned this strategy from watching a Chinese player do it on Billy Billy which is essentially Chinese YouTube. He used this strategy to start out his game and ended up winning in less than a hundred turns. This is the second game of his now that I've watched recently where he's won in less than a hundred turns on deity with standard time and map size without cheesy game modes enabled and I'm blown away by how insane that is at least for me I don't know. My next full length video is going to be a deep dive into his whole game strategy where I break everything down step by step in a highly edited analysis of all the moves he made that helped him win. I'll pin a link at the top of the comment section for this video if you're interested in checking out for yourself. In the meantime though if you found this video useful I'll put a couple videos up here right now. The first one is about five mistakes almost everybody makes in the early game or the second video might be a better choice if you're more focused on domination as we look at a Chinese player and how they were able to win under 100 turns. Anyway I've rambled enough and I'll see you in the next video.